considering last week went so well for me, I'm kind of expecting this trip to the flea markets to be kind of shitty, but you never really know. At least the weather isn't ungodly bad like the day before, so if the flea markets do end up sucking, I still get to enjoy this excellent weather. The first games we have are a Lost Planet and a Skyrim for three bucks each. I would have grabbed that Skyrim, except this one doesn't have the artwork sleeve for whatever reason, so eh, no thanks. I pretty much have all these games except for that ready to rumble boxing on the PS2, but it's got some deep scratches. There is, however, a limited edition Brothers in Arms game that he has here for the PC in excellent shape. He wants 15 bucks for it, which is not bad, but I'd prefer to have this limited edition on console, plus I really didn't want to spend 15 bucks right off the bat. Some huge planes and helicopters on this table, but they're super beat up, so I can't imagine why anyone would want to buy them. It's not even like these things are really even worth restoring either, you're better off just buying a brand new one. I'm sure you've probably seen this in my other flea market videos, but both Dad and I keep getting interested in this Bolatronic electronic game. It's five bucks, and it's in excellent condition, wrapped up real nice inside, no scratches, and it even has the manual. But we both agreed that even if we did end up buying this, the chances of us playing it more than once or twice are really not all that high. Uh, pretty hurts DS games right there. Yeah. I don't really have much of an interest in DS games, though. Well, the only thing I had even a slight interest in was that GoldenEye, but then I remembered that I've played a few FPS games on the DS before, and I just couldn't get used to the weird controls. That's different. I've never seen anything like that. Oh, I want I don't know what that is. Yeah. Well, we're, we're being clean That's cool. It is. They, they took the whole pool. Yeah, that, that, that pool there. Yeah, right. Must be a cooler. Thank you. Well, yeah, it has a drain hole. Mm -hmm. 35 on the dance, my sticker came off. It's a cooler. I don't have any news for it, though. So. Yeah, where, where, would you, where would we put it? Yeah, no, I'm just looking at it. I'm just trying to decide. Twilight Princesses on the Wii complete for 8 bucks. It's one of my least favorite Zelda games, but I'd feel like such an idiot if I pass up on that price. In that case behind those set of plates there is a fire extinguisher grenade. The guy wants 10 bucks for it, which my dad ended up buying. Here's a picture of what it looks like up close, since I did such a shit job of filming. It's pretty damn cool. I've seen one of these before on TV, but not in person. How much are the games? Two bucks a piece. Two bucks a piece. Would you give me a better deal if I bought like five? Oh wow, Onimusha Dawn of Dreams for the PS2. I've been looking for this forever now, and she wants five bucks for it. It's not a terrible deal considering this goes for about 15 to 20 on eBay. However, it does not have the manual, nor does it have the second disc. Not having the manual is annoying, but it's not a deal breaker. However, missing a disc is an instant deal breaker. There's a handful of assorted volumes of different manga on this table some of which include yaoi, otherwise known as homosexual manga, if you're into that. But there was nothing that I was really interested in. Generally speaking, I don't buy manga without reading the first two volumes or so online. That way I can find out if the books are even worth buying or not. Take three on that Star Wars Dreamcast. Yeah, I just wish it wasn't Dreamcast, I wish it was PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Because no one has a Dreamcast these days. I know, I know, I should be charging more. <laughs> yeah. It's like actually a collectible now, those things are so old. Well, it wouldn't be a flea market without sports games. 
Seriously, I think it's impossible not to come across at least one. Well, would you look at that? A PlayStation Move Navigation Controller. I've been hoping to find one of these here, and for only five bucks? Yeah, I think I'll grab that. One of the first things my dad started buying from the flea markets and the occasional antique shop was replica gas pumps, sort of like the one dad's holding here. Nowadays, we rarely ever come across these things, and Dad kept debating whether or not he wanted it. After walking by it another three or four times, and me convincing him to just buy the damn thing, he finally did. You see, both of us have the same problem of being interested in something, walking by it numerous times, and then once we finally decide, okay, now I want it, whatever it ends up being is now long gone. That's neat. I think so. Yeah. How much is your wood sign down here? I'm asking 25 Okay. Thank you. Or make it for Can you yeah. open it? I don't want to. This is the case. They haven't like they haven't seen it. There's some decent games here on the table this time around. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, Ace Combat Zero, Mario Golf on the GameCube, and some others, but nothing really standing out, except for one very specific game. A game, in fact, that I've been trying to find for a very, very long time. That being Test Drive Eve of Destruction on the PS2. It's one of my favorite racing games of all time, and yes, I did buy it, and I got one hell of a great deal. And that about does it for another successful flea market adventure. Didn't really buy too much stuff because I'll be going on vacation with my wife soon, so I'm trying to limit myself better. But either way, I'm still very, very happy with what I ended up buying. Alright, so this is probably the fourth or fifth time I've tried to record this. I just have nothing but bad luck this time around. The first time it was raining really heavy and the power went out, that was like three days ago. Then I had an issue where the file that I had this video footage on was corrupt and I had to delete it. No idea why. And then the third time I was just fucking stupid and accidentally deleted it. And I don't remember the last time. So it was just like, oh my god, just nothing but bad luck this time around. But anyway... Uh, I think I said this in a video, I didn't get that much stuff this time around, but there is still stuff that I was very, very happy with finding. Um, first thing I grabbed was this Sony navigation controller for the PlayStation Move gimmick. Uh, now I'm finally able to play mo a majority of the PlayStation Move games. The only thing out of the PlayStation Move that I'm actually looking for now is those... Um, I guess gun things where you put this and this is like the foregrip and then the uh, PlayStation Move is in the handle or some shit. I don't even know what games are compatible with it really. I think like Killzone 3 and um, one of the SOCOM games and that would just be kind of interesting to figure out how that sort of peripheral, the gun peripheral works on those games. That's just more of my curiosity. But yeah, for five bucks I thought that was a pretty good deal. Then I have four games that I picked up for $7. They were $2 each, but I ended up picking them up for $7. Uh, first of which is The Operative, No One Lives Forever. I had originally thought this was supposed to be like a, a 007 type ripoff, but then I watched some gameplay, and I don't believe it is. I just think it's kind of, it has sort, sort of similarities of which, and then the name kind of you would think would be a uh, James Bond spoof type thing. But I really am not sure. Oop, I don't want to put that there. Then we have Shellshock Nam 67. This is a Vietnam third person shooter. I've heard all right things. Like this is more like the mediocre third person shooters, I think. At least I've read. Uh, now the interesting thing is that the sequel to this game is Shellshock 2 Blood Trails. That's what it is. And that is a first person Vietnam shooter with zombies. And it's quite shit. I want to review that game again at some point. Whether or not I do is random at this point. Don't know anything. I've never played this one, though. 
win back cover operations. I've played a win back game on the Nintendo 64, and I don't know if this is like a remaster slash remake of it that they released on the PS2, um, but I remember really, really loving the Nintendo 64 one, so I'm hoping that I'm going to end up loving this as well. Then the final thing I got from that seller was Second Sight. I had thought this was a horror game, actually, because just based off the color cover, it kind of looks like it would be. But then looking on the back, it kind of gives off the impression that this is a third-person shooter with some sort of paranormal shit going on. Because at the bottom here it says, Paranormal powers. Possess enemies. Wipe out a room with psi beam and become invisible. And there's nothing else about it that says it's, like, scary or anything else. So I'm just assuming there's no real, like, horror-based aspect to this. Which is fine. Um, then we have... Star Wars Demolition for the Dreamcast. Now, I had walked by this seller three or four times, and I'm like, I really, really wish that was a PS1 game, because I would snap it up in a heartbeat. And um, it's like, okay, I know if I don't grab this, I'm going to be mad. And the hope that I have is that I come across a Dreamcast at a disc replay for 30 bucks and has controllers and whatever, because I... Don't trust buying Dreamcast Dreamcast from flea markets because there's always like issues with them. I've read like I've had a friend of mine that had bought a Dreamcast from a uh, from a flea market before that the disc reader was completely fucked. If you don't know what it is, um, if you've ever played Twisted Metal or Vig Vigilante Eight, it's basically the same thing just with Star Wars characters and vehicles. Moving on, we have Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princesses for the Wii. Uh, I picked it up for eight bucks, complete, and I thought it was an excellent deal because I think like GameStop wants twenty for it used. Not entirely sure of that. Now I said in the video that this is one of my least favorite Zelda games. I have not played it in about ten years, so my opinion is probably going to be different since my opinion seems to change between every what six to twelve months. Uh, but I just remember being so bored of this when I had played it. It was just something about it. It was just not clicking. I wasn't getting invested into it. I thought it was just kind of meh. It was visually very nice for the time, but it was like, I just, I thought that the dungeons or whatever it would have been was just so boring and bland that it just made me stop playing after like the second or third temple. I'll give it another shot at some point. And finally, we have Test Drive Eve of Destruction. I had picked it up for six bucks. The seller wanted ten. That is a very, very good deal. This game, I believe, is about thirty to forty dollars on eBay, even without the manual. And finding this for as good of a price as I did is just so awesome. It is an excellent game, one of my favorite racing games of all time, and I cannot wait to play this within the next. 15 minutes I stopped recording this video. Anyway, that's it everyone. I want to thank you all very much for watching and take care.